Right, so it is finally time for Liz's mum to confront Ed at their 4th of July party. So last time out, Liz went wedding dress shopping with her daughter Riley, her mum and her grandmother. With the wedding just eight weeks away, Liz's mum aired concerns she has over the marriage. She also said that she felt there was tension in the air between her and Ed, mainly due to the fact that she's the one that Liz vents to when Ed behaves badly. So to ease the tensions, she proposed speaking to Ed early on during the 4th of July party coming up. And now today is the day. However, there are some other obstacles to overcome first. For this 4th of July party, Liz's family aren't the only ones invited. Ed's mom Norma is back on the scene and due to arrive in Arkansas all the way from California shortly. Liz and my mom are really getting along, so I don't have any worries there at all. Yeah, Norma and I kind of rekindled our relationship. You can tell from Ed's face that this is still evidently an awkward subject. The reason Ed and Norma fell out in the first place was because he kicked her out to move Liz in. Obviously, she didn't really approve of the relationship much before that, but that was the final straw. After that, she stopped speaking to Ed for an entire year. Thankfully though, it seems like they've been able to put that behind them. So she arrives, they give her a warm welcome and show her around the house, which gives us a chance to fully see the garden for the first time. My goodness. This is huge. Love it. A little bit plain at the moment, but not too shabby. It's nice to see them getting along well too. Firstly, because Norma is 85 years old, but also because a happy family is going to give Ed and Liz the best shot at their marriage working out. I mean, it's not much, but it's nice to see them working through at least some of their problems. Still, now that they've moved so far away, it's been a while since Ed and his mum have seen each other. So Liz and Riley head off out with Liz's mum and grandmother, allowing the two of them to spend some quality time together. You think you would want to move to Arkansas? Because, you know, we love you, we miss you, we, we want your golden years to be surrounded by family. It's a nice idea to be fair, and Norma says that she's thought about it, but she doesn't seem too convinced. She says that it's not an easy decision and that there are a lot of things that she has to consider. On the one hand, she does love Arkansas, and this is of course the place that she raised Ed and his siblings, but her home is in California and she has a sister there in Chula Vista. By my sister, I, I just uh, feel a little bit sad living away from her, but I wouldn't mind living close to Ed. <laughs> Once again, she doesn't sound particularly convincing, especially with that nervous laughter. It sounds like she's potentially happy to live close, just not too close. And to be honest, can you blame her? Ed then tells Norma that he passed his state boards, so now has his real estate license. And once Liz passes her exams next week, they're planning on earning a good living and buying five or six acres of land for them to live on, where there would be room for Norma too. You could live here with Liz and I. Just, you know, whenever you're ready. This sounds like an open invitation for something he considers inevitable. Like it's not a case of if she comes to live with them, it's when. Given what happened last time, this is a bold move. But to Ed at least, it makes sense. So much of their family are here that she'd get to see them all of the time and she'd have people to look after her whenever she needed. And I definitely did not run that by Liz. Liz wouldn't be upset with me that I asked my mom to move in. She would um, want to kill me. What an absolutely mental thing to admit. He just doesn't learn, does he? He is supposed to be entering into a life partnership with Liz in two months time. Why on earth is he making huge life decisions that affect both of them without consulting her first? And knowing that Liz would be fuming at him for doing so makes it so much worse. Anyway, Ed then goes on to tell Norma more about this new chapter in his life. Now I get to be kind of, you know, Riley's um, dad. Stephanie, you might be she would enjoy having a, a little sister. He says he gets to be the dad, but he behaves like a child. If anything, from what we've seen so far, Riley is the most adult of the three of them. Speaking of Tiffany, Ed tells Norma that he reaches out twice a month, but she never replies. Apparently, she's just still not talking to him. In response, Norma says that Tiffany is having problems dealing with the fact that her dad is marrying someone younger than her, and so she thinks that she just needs more time. What if she doesn't come to the wedding? Maybe I can talk to her. Yeah. Well, with the Tiffany talk left there, Ed then asks Norma what she thinks of the marriage. In response, Norma says that they've had a very up and down relationship and that they need to face the fact that things like that make marriages really hard. It's clear that she's as uncertain as anyone else about the whole thing and that she's far from optimistic, but she admits that ultimately it's not up to her. My place is not to make your decisions who you're gonna marry. So it's your decision, it's your life. 
It's not exactly a seal of approval, is it? And you can tell that that wasn't what Ed wanted to hear by his facial expression. He says he shouldn't care what other people think about the marriage and that it should be all about how he feels. But he can tell his mum is very cautious about his decision to marry Liz. He says hearing his mum's doubts would usually make him second guess himself, but nowadays he's far more confident in his decision. All that being said though, it's still just not ideal. It's not that encouraging to hear, you know, say uh, two months before you're gonna get married. Yeah, when the people closest to you are all having doubts this strong, maybe it's worth reconsidering whether it's all happening too soon. It's such a mood killer as well. The way everyone's talking, it's like they're here for a funeral rather than a celebration. Anyway, as the party begins, there are more immediate issues to worry about. Liz and Ed are both very aware of the impending conversation, and Liz in particular is worried that it could ruin the entire day. A hundred percent, there's a fear that Ed could piss off my mom. Ed does not think before he says anything and he's very impulsive. Remind us why you're with him again. Honestly, if you took this out of context and showed it to someone who has no idea who Ed is, they would be forgiven for thinking that she was talking about a child here. This time at least, Ed does realise how important it is that this goes well. Mentioning whilst testing out some fireworks that he's learnt that their relationship doesn't work well when their family aren't supporting them. I didn't expect it to curve. Hey, um, yeah. Maybe everything curves. <laughs> Awful. Worst image ever. I do not want to hear him making those references ever again. And also, how lame were those fireworks? It's almost like they're foreshadowing the wedding, which will no doubt be celebrated not with a bang, but with a whimper. Anyway, the party begins and eventually Patty pulls Ed for a chat. She starts off by acknowledging the tension between the two of them and says that she knows exactly why it's there because of things that have happened in the past, because Liz calls me, okay? She calls me to vent. Everything I said to but, you- By the way, hold on one second, but- Oh my goodness, shut up, Ed. She's trying to talk to you and you interrupt her in the first sentence. I have to interrupt frequently because of copyright laws, but you, however, do not. So do yourself a favor and shut up. Also, did he really need to get a full plate of food for this? I don't imagine it's gonna be a quick one, but he's not gonna starve to death, is he? We can only hope that at some point his mouth is gonna be too full for him to interrupt and he can finally listen for once. But I do know this. I do know I've given you, grandma and grandpa, every reason to doubt my feelings. What an absolute waffler. What part of the point he just made warranted interrupting hers? I feel like he just didn't want to sit there and listen to it. He just wanted to be like, yeah, I know what you're going to say. So let me just sum it up in a way that makes you pity me. And unsurprisingly, the pity party continues. I'm not making excuses, but I haven't been in a committed relationship in 30 years. And then here's this beautiful young woman that likes me. Mm -hmm. Ugh, it is just insufferable. He says he's not making excuses and then goes on to make excuses and excruciatingly nauseous excuses at that. As if being shocked that a woman likes him is any justification for the way he's behaved. If anything, getting someone that you think is out of your league should make you try your best to keep them, not treat them the way he's treated Liz. And also, did he have to emphasize to her mom how young she is. And I'm so insecure about myself that I don't, I can't accept it. He is a perpetual victim, isn't he? She's talking about how he's behaved and what she's heard from Liz and how that makes it hard for her to get behind the relationship. And in response, rather than apologizing and saying that he's changed, he's justifying his behavior by saying that she's too good for him. What's even scarier about this is that he's phrasing it in therapy talk too. Like some therapist is out there enabling this behavior, reinforcing these ideas in his head and indirectly giving him these manipulative ways to convey these ideas. So I do everything I can to push her away, mm -hmm. to run from her mm -hmm. so many, many times. Once again, reinforcing a negative for no apparent reason. This time, how many times he's broken up with her? And he's saying all of this as if she hasn't heard it all from Liz already. This isn't a conversation. This is a yap session from the most self-pitying narcissist on the show, which given the 90 Day Fiance cast is really saying something. The biggest difference for us is that we did this thing in Florida for two weeks and it was like transformable. Which, by the way, is not a word. I'm guessing he went for transformational and somehow ended up mixing formidable in there. Not the sharpest egg in the carton. Anyway, he acknowledges that he and Liz still have their squabbles and says that he's sure she's aware. But he says that a lot has changed since Florida, especially since they brought in a new rule where they can't leave the driveway without turning around and saying I love you. And at long last, on that sickly ending, he finally shuts up and allows Patty to talk. Now I may still be on the fence at the moment, but again, I know that there are two sides to every argument. 
Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I don't think this is a case of sometimes Liz is in the right and Ed's in the wrong, and sometimes Ed's in the right and Liz is in the wrong. It's more that they're almost always both in the wrong, and Ed is usually just the worst of the two. That's pretty much all Patty says though, so once again, Ed gets out his tiny little spade and continues digging. I'll tell you this, every time that I've broken up with Liz, I regretted it. Good. As if he thought that was a good thing to say. To remind her once again that he's dumped her daughter several times and make the most obvious statement about his regret. I mean, it goes without saying that he's regretted it, otherwise he wouldn't be here. I can't tell if this is infuriating to watch or if I'm almost mesmerized by the stupidity and lack of social awareness on display from this little devil. I do like you. I like your personality. I have seen a lot of growth and there's still a lot to do. Yeah. When she says she's seen a lot of growth, does she mean width-wise? To be fair though, with the wedding looking like a near certainty, this isn't the worst approach. It keeps them both happy whilst not shying away from the fact that there's still some serious self-improvement needed from Ed. The day they get married isn't the day all the work is done, it's just the beginning. I hope he's listening to me. He has a tendency to talk. <laughs> but they can make this work as long as they stay on the path they're on. What path exactly does she see? Because to me, the path looks like an old rotten wooden walkway with a perilous drop into crocodile infested waters beneath it. I don't see what the tangible difference is between now and any other period of peace they've had between breakups. Still, at least someone has some confidence in their chances because it seems like it's lacking pretty much everywhere else. I'm so glad you're here. Well, Welcome you. to the family. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> How's he managed that then? I feel like Patty let Ed get away with a lot of blame avoidance, but that's what he's good at. Making people believe that he's changed and that he's working on it and that they should pity rather than criticize him. But we've seen it enough times to see right through it. I'll believe he's changed when I see him genuinely tested and come out clean on the other side. This is, this is it for us. Like we're, we're gonna be good. As long as I don't screw it up. <laughs> Well, there's a first time for everything. For now though, it seems like all is well. No doubt there's plenty more drama to come as the pressure builds ahead of the wedding. But with Norma back on the scene, Riley happily knocking about, Liz's grandparents giving their okay, and Liz's mum giving Ed another chance, the party goes exactly how they planned it. This celebration is like everything I could have hoped for. A rare wholesome end for this tumultuous couple. However, uncertainty is still in the air and Liz still doesn't know that Ed has made the huge decision of inviting Norma to come and live with them without consulting her first. This whole thing feels like a giant stack of Jenga, just waiting for that one wrong piece to be taken out before it all comes crumbling down. So if you wanna make sure you don't miss Big Ed taking apart the tower piece by piece, make sure you're subscribed down below. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.